Hi, this is Udi Tirosh from the DIY Photography Network. Today on the show we have the epic Benjamin Von Wang and Benjamin is going to talk to us about a cool technique called steel wool light painting. Ben, you have the floor. Hey guys, this is Benjamin Von Wang, Montreal based photographer. So I'm here visiting Udi and yesterday we got together and we decided to do something quite fun called steel wool painting. Now we wanted to break it down to you guys to explain to you how to actually get it done. Um, we're going to go over a couple of things. So there's um, uh, equipment, uh, safety, um, location, and as well as a little bit of technical tips that we found were extremely useful. So first off, what do you need to do steel wool painting? Well, there's only a couple ingredients. Um, first would be an egg beater, a metal egg beater as a container for the steel wool that uh, you can purchase at any um, cleaning supply or dollar store or whatever. Um, and as well as a metal chain, which would allow you to uh, spin the whole thing around, in, which will create the light patterns um, and send the sparks all over the place. And the 9-volt battery lights the whole thing on fire. So by simply touching the steel wool, um, we can actually have some pretty cool and dangerous looking sparks that fly everywhere. So the second thing I want to talk about is location. What do you have to look out for in location? Well, for one, you want it to be an isolated location. Uh, you have sparks flying all over the place. You don't want it to hit a passerby, for example. You want the place to be wet because you're spinning away flaming little objects and don't want to start a fire. Uh, third thing is you don't want any type of ambient light to come in, which would screw with your exposure. Or maybe you would want a little bit, which could add some sort of cool effect to it, but ideally not too much light. Third thing to keep in mind is safety. For one, it would, it's good to have a wet cloth just in case something does light on fire. Uh, second, if you can, a fire extinguisher to put out any larger fires that you may set off. In terms of clothing, uh, we found that having a hat, extremely useful. Sparks are flying all over the place. Or if not, at the very least, a long sleeve with a hoodie. That also does a great job of keeping the skin safe. All right, so to present a little bit about camera settings. Now, first off, um, you don't need very much. You need a tripod, a camera, maybe a flashlight to see where you're going, and that's pretty much about all you would need. In terms of settings, what I found was pretty good. Just shooting at ISO 100, uh, keep things really, really sharp, and probably an aperture of F5. The exposure actually changes quite rapidly depending on the speed at which you're spinning, so the whole thing is kind of, it, it's really open to interpretation. Um, shutter speed wise, uh, if you're in a place that's really, really dark, it doesn't matter how long your, your, your shutter is open for. So you can really play around and see what works for you. So one thing that Nikon has that's actually quite nifty, uh, Udi didn't really know about this, so it was quite cool that I was able to teach him something. Nikon has something fancy called an interv interval timer uh, mode. So the interval timer mode basically acts as an intervalometer, intervalometer, as an intervalometer. Intervalometer, an intervalometer, and uh, basically what is what's really cool is that you can actually set it to shoot continuously, one shot every five seconds or ten seconds or so, meaning that you can just really leave your camera, run it, and actually spin the wool on yourself. You could actually be all alone. Uh, let us know how it goes. That's all right.